All right, guys, I'm back with my review of this week's TNA Impact Wrestling for December 26, 2013. And this one starts off with Rockstar Spud. He introduces Dixie Carter. She comes out and talks about Magnus winning the world title, how he's the top man in Dixieland. And she's got a big announcement to make. And this is like some type of running joke. So Jeff Hardy comes out and interrupts her. And he says he's got something he just has to get off his chest. Rockstar Spud says he's the chief of staff and he can take the creatures, shove them up his ass, and maybe he'll let him make the announcement next week. <laughs> so Jeff Hardy gets pissed off at Rockstar Spud and he gets in Dixie Carter's face and he says this will only take a minute, but EC3 runs out and throws Hardy out of the ring. So Sting comes down and he says that he wants a match. Sting and Jeff Hardy versus EC3 and Rockstar Spud. And Dixie Carter says, you know what, okay, tonight's main event will be a tag match, but she doesn't actually say it'll be that match, so I expect some type of swerve later. And then she tries to make the announcement again, but she gets interrupted by Gunner. So Gunner comes out. This whole thing with Gunner and Dixie Carter, it was very awkward. But he says he's the, he has the briefcase with the world title shot. So he wants to face Magnus. And Dixie says, denied. <laughs> that was awesome. I really like that. Just shut Gunner down right there. And she says, Magnus is in England right now, so he can't do the match. And Gunner says, well, tell him when he comes back, I'm ready for him. He better be ready for me. It was just like that. I mean, it was really bad. Horrible stuff here. And then James Storm comes out. And he says that... He fills Gunner, stooged him out to Bobby Roode when he got attacked in that bar because how did Roode know he was going to be in that bar? And He thinks Gunner's a stooge. So he wants a match against Gunner for the briefcase. And Dixie Carter makes that match and then she's about to make her announcement and says, I don't feel like making it anymore. So it was this big running joke every time she tried to make the announcement someone else would come out and interrupt her. So it's James Storm versus Gunner for the briefcase. And it started off kind of slow. They brawl around to the outside, and they're fighting, and then the bell rings, and Earl Hebner has counted both guys out. He was, I had to rewind this, because I was like, when did this, he must have been counting fast as shit, which he was. So this was terrible. Even the people at ringside watching this were like, what? The bell? What the hell's going on here? I mean, it was just bad. So both guys get counted out. The whole thing was very short. And then they keep fighting and they brawl to the back. It was ridiculous. Very bad stuff. Then Brooke Tessmacher comes up to Bully Ray, who's sulking backstage. And she says, I've been trying to get in touch with you. You're not answering my phone calls. What's going on with you? He doesn't answer. So she says, you know what? I'm going to go out there and air all your dirty laundry, your deepest, darkest secrets. And Bully says, that's really not a good idea. But she goes anyway. They show a video of Magnus talking about his previous gimmicks, the Brutus Magnus Gladiator, British Invasion, his tag team with Samoa Joe. And I thought this was a pretty good video. I do like Magnus. I am a fan of his, and I think he has a lot of potential. So I like this video they did. Then Brooke Tessmacher comes out, and she's talking about how she hasn't seen Bully. She asked him to come out and... Uh, tell the truth or something like that and Bully comes out and she's like baby we can work through this and then she starts talking about how she was using Bully to get fame and fortune and now he's like the ugly kid in high school who has no friends no one wants to talk to him and she kept going back and forth she was really bad but then Bully grabs her and he says I only kept you around because I had certain uses for you and you weren't even that good at some of those uses. And he just cut an amazing promo here. Then he says that he wants Brooke to spread his word that all the evil, sadistic things he's done, it's only going to get worse. So I really like this segment because of Bully Ray. What I don't like about this is it's a little cheesy. The way the dramatic music just starts playing out of nowhere. Like, I don't really care for that. And... Some of it is a little over the top, but Bully Ray's done a really good job with this so far. I have to give him credit there, and I'm curious to see where they go from here. One other thing I'd like to mention about the Bully Ray segment 
He was wearing a Motley Crue jacket. And when he laid out Ken Anderson, part of the promo he cut was from a Motley Crue song. So I'm not really sure what the tie-in is here. It probably means nothing. It's just something I noticed, but it is kind of strange. And actually, I hope they don't do any more Motley Crue type stuff with this Bully Ray character. It's It definitely seems really cheesy to reference this old 80s band for a gimmick in like 2013. Like, they're not dark and evil anymore. Uh, so, <laughs> then we see Sting talking to Jeff Hardy, and Jeff Hardy says that he had something to get off his chest, and Sting's like, well, just let's focus on tonight, taking out EC3 and Rockstar Spud, and um, I'm sure you'll get your chance to say whatever you want to say later. And I just have a weird feeling that this is some type of retirement thing. Like, they're going to do some retirement angle with Jeff Hardy here. Then it's the Monsters Ball match with Joseph Park versus Bad Influence. And I didn't think the match was that great at all. It was really Bad Influence just beating Joseph Park down with, like, a crutch, uh, Singapore cane, some trash cans, a chair. And they're just beating his ass. So Eric Young runs down. He's like, come on, man. you got to fight. Joseph Park is like, help me. So Eric Young gets ready to bust him open. Bad Influence stops him. They beat him down. They go to hit him with the cane, and they accidentally hit Joseph Park. So, of course, he gets busted open. He's bleeding all over the place from this cane shot. And he takes out Bad Influence. He hits the black hole slam on Christopher Daniels for the win. And he also hit them with a, uh, the Singapore cane, kendo stick, whatever. He hit them in the face too, yet they didn't get busted open. They didn't bleed at all. <laughs> and Joseph Park gets hit once in the same exact place, and he's covered in blood. But he takes him out, he wins the match, and he holds up Janice. And I guess we're supposed to assume he's Abyss again. And Eric Young is all happy about this. But what I don't understand is, why does Eric Young want him to become Abyss so bad? I mean, Joseph Park is a nice guy. Abyss just destroyed people. Why does Eric Young want Abyss around when he's just going to start hurting people again? And Joseph Park was a nice guy. Okay, after watching the Monsters Ball match, there was a comment on my review of last week's TNA show that I have to read. And it's from Jeremy Taylor. And it says, I had sex with a girl that looked just like Janice one time. <laughs> that was awesome. But I have another comment from King Champ Triple H. And he says, well, he says a lot of stuff, but what I want to talk about is where he says, Magnus does not have the it factor. He's not ready to be the World Heavyweight Champion. And while I agree with that to some extent, I feel like Magnus has a lot of potential to become a great champion. He's still very young. He's decent on the mic and in the ring. He's got a great look to him, great size, and he's believable as a champion. So I think Magnus could be a great champion, and this is his opportunity to prove that. Um, the stuff he's done so far has not been that impressive. I agree with that. But he's definitely improved since he was the Gladiator Magnus, the Brutus Magnus character. He's improved since then. He's come a long way, and I think given the opportunity, which he has now, he can show everybody whether he deserves this spot or not. Um, plus, it makes a lot of sense because TNA is really popular in the UK. Um, but yeah, this is his chance, and if he drops the ball, he's got nobody to blame but himself because they're giving him a huge opportunity here. So Gail Kim calls ODB down to the ring to face Lady Tapa. And the two of them have a match. It was okay. Lady Tapa hits the TKO stunner on ODB for the win, thanks to some interference by Gail Kim. They show some weird backstage segment with Chris Sabin and Velvet Sky. Chris Sabin is being a dick to her as usual. I have no idea where they're going with this. I think she's possibly going to leave him for Austin Aries, maybe? I don't know. But I've always heard it's a bad idea to have your girlfriend or wife involved in an angle like this in wrestling. Uh, just look at Karen Jarrett and all of those other situations. So, really not a smart move on Saban's part. But then we get... Is there anything else that happens before this? 
Then we get the main event, Sting and Jeff Hardy versus Rockstar Spud and EC3. And before the match, Dixie Carter comes on the screen and she says, her big announcement is next week is the coronation of Magnus, her new champion. And tonight, this tag match is going to be a handicap match. So Rockstar Spud and EC3's partners are the Bromans. So the match was just okay <laughs> at best. I really didn't care about any of this. I thought it was really boring. You got Sting out there wrestling in a t-shirt. You got the Bromans, who I do like. But then you also have Rockstar Spud. He's out there. He's still got his little bow tie on. This guy is so small. Imagine Lady Tapa and Rockstar Spud having sex. I mean, I think Robert Strickland left a comment on my last TNA video saying Rockstar Spud was 5'4". I don't know if he's that short, but he is a very small guy. So the whole time in the match, he's just running away from everybody. Uh, which, I guess, works for someone like him. He's the stooge gimmick. But the match was just okay. EC3 gets a roll-up on Sting for the win. Afterwards, Jeff Hardy is talking to Sting, and he says, This was my last match in TNA, and I will not come back until sunshine shines on this dark castle once again. And it was like, oh my god, what a drama queen. So that was the end of the show. And overall, I thought this was a really average impact. Actually below average, because I can't think of anything I really liked on this show. Um, nothing was really good. And where is Samuel Shaw? It's been at least two weeks since we've seen anything from this guy, and people are going to forget. Like, come on, TNA. But anyways, that's my review. Hope you guys liked the video. Leave your thoughts on this week's show in the comments, and thanks for watching.